my name is Nima Tang, and welcome to Masterclass with CVS Beauty. As CVS's beauty inclusivity consultant, I am truly honored to introduce a series all about revealing tips and tricks from top artists in the industry, showcasing the best in beauty for deeper skin tones. Today, I have with me Mally Magic, and she is going to be telling me all about her journey in this beauty industry. And you guys, I have been dying to get this lady to touch my face. She's going to be doing her signature dewy brown girl makeup look on me today. Thank you so much for joining us, Molly. Thank Tell us a little. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, like we cannot start talking about me until we talk about you. You are absolutely gorgeous, and you and I have been stalking each other for the longest time. So this is a perfect opportunity with CVS Beauty to get to work with each other. A little bit about me, I've been in the industry for over 10 years, and I came in here representing women that look like you. And I was- Say that again, okay? okay? I need that sound bite again. <laughs> I came in the industry and I'm still here and I'm going to stay here because I represent women that look like you. And I am so grateful to just have this opportunity. I've been a makeup artist for over 12 years. I have a master's in fine arts. What brought you into makeup and where did your journey start in the beauty industry? So I moved to New York and I started working with photographers and all of them were really great photographers. But this one in particular, who is one of my best friends right now, mm -hmm. she told me the truth and she told me, Mally, your work is a little bit too heavy. Yeah. So I went to the drawing board and I said, OK, I am going to revamp the way I do makeup mm -hmm. because the the muses that I work with, they're so beautiful. But I was just covering them up and I wasn't even nothing was intentional. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about the, the after I see. Um, effect. I was just kind of either giving the client what they wanted mm -hmm. and I wasn't really thinking about what my signature was. Exactly. And once I kind of focused on what it is that I want to bring to the table, which is beautiful complexions. Mm -hmm. Complexion is everything to me. That's why yes. you sitting here right in front of me <laughs> just means so much because you have the most beautiful complexion. Um, I just changed my entire techniques. Mm. I just said, okay, you know what? I'm was going. that hard for you? It was very hard. Yeah. Because I can see that. It's like learning something. It's like trying to like learn a completely different skill backwards. I can only imagine. Well, people think that wearing um, the no makeup makeup look mm. is easy. It's not. But it's not. It's the same amount of makeup, just a different technique. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to be intentional about yeah. it, right? So, Mal, where did Dewey Brown Girls come from? Dewey Brown Girls basically comes from me seeing women like you and myself. Mm -hmm. um, we were always underrepresented in the beauty space. Absolutely. And Dewey Brown Girls basically describes my techniques, which is all about doing this, mm -hmm. fresh, effortless skin. Um, and I've just, I've just always kind of honed in on that particular technique. And I just love it because I feel like it's timeless. Yes. I feel like if I see my work 20 years from now, I will still love it. Yeah. Um, and I used That's to. That's a really good sentiment to say, too, because like not a lot of people. There's some videos that I've done <laughs> just even five years ago. And I'm like, I don't know about that one. I should have. Well, it took me a long time to get to this space. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been a makeup artist for a very long time, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to kind of come up with my own term to describe my technique. And, and I think perfect. you think it's perfect. Yes. Thank you. I think Dewey Brown Girls really fits yeah. exactly what I do. Absolutely. Yeah. So going back on you saying you've been a makeup artist for a very long time. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? Who were your inspirations? So um, I'm a visual artist. I have a master's in fine arts. But when I moved to New York years ago, mm -hmm. I decided to get into makeup artistry. And it was something that was always in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that got my cousins ready and my mom, you know, ready for yeah. different events. And everyone always told me, Mally, you are really good at this. And I just never considered it. Yeah. Um, so eventually just, you know, going to different photo shoots and being the only makeup artist on set. And I realized, OK, who is going to take care of the dark girls? Who is doing makeup for, you know, black women? So I realized that there was a gap in the industry that I needed to or a void that I needed to fill. Mm -hmm. So that's how I became really passionate about the makeup artistry side of it. Do you think um, your, um, your fine arts degree helped with that? Do you think like it was like some sort of overlapping within it? 
I think so because the way that I look at color and texture, mm-hmm. I feel like it's different. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, and I don't look at a product and just do what that product tells me to do. Mm-hmm. If I feel, you know, if I want to correct a certain part of the face, if I want to use a certain product for blush, mm-hmm. you know, I just feel like my art background just really helps helps me see color and texture just completely different amazing mm-hmm. any inspirations for today's look what are we doing i oh know what gosh. i know what i asked for well but first I- of all we have to we have to talk about how we've been following each other for so long so long and finally 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 so, so we're excited. bursting out of the scenes yeah. right now because we've been trying to get together for the longest mm-hmm. Ever since I seen you, I was like, I have to get you in my chair. You're like the queen of the Dewey Brown girls. Thank you. So I think for me, because your skin is so beautiful Mm -hmm. um, and you're just so beautiful, Mm -hmm. I don't want to take away from that. Mm -hmm. So and that's the thing about being a Dewey Brown girl. It's all about effortless. It's not about like masking anything. It's really kind of allowing your true beauty to shine through. Yeah. So I want to be a little bit minimum, but I think that we should play up the eyes. Play up the eyes a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. I want to know about your journey and your process with like, especially drugstore beauty, because that's what we're talking about today. But um, just beauty in general, where you think the industry is going? Well, the industry has changed drastically Mm -hmm. and we have to give ourselves the credit because women like you and myself just representing ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really show up for people who look like us. Yeah. So, um, I just, I just want to, you know, pat us on the Give shoulder a little bit. Give ourselves some flowers yeah. for a moment, you know. <laughs> exactly. <moment pause. laughs> exactly. But I definitely want to tell you about my CVS beauty journey. Oh, yeah. So I started out working at my aunt and uncle's restaurant, mm-hmm. right? And all of my money literally went to CVS. All of it? I just used to go through the beauty aisles yeah. to look for blush, mm-hmm. foundations, mascaras, because I've always loved color, yeah. you know? And that's where everyone starts. Everyone starts in the drugstore. Exactly. Not everyone's got $50 to throw out on foundation when you're 13. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, I've, I've always gone to CVS Beauty or just, you know, that was that was just jumpstart mm-hmm. because, like you said, it was affordable. It was accessible. And it still is. We still have great products mm-hmm. that we use today. Exactly. But... The difference is is when I was shopping for products, products did not look anything like they look today. And I probably looked a mess, like when I think about my foundation. But, um, you know, I am, of course, excited that brands are now jumping more on board. Mm -hmm. Um, However, I do want to encourage us to continue to do the work that we're doing, continue to come out with product lines on our own, or also team up with the, you know, big beauty companies Mm -hmm. to help them continue to be more inclusive because we want to see ourselves represented Mm -hmm. is extremely important. Yeah. And I don't, I I agree with what you're saying about like, we want to see ourselves represented, but that doesn't mean that we can't represent ourselves as well. Like, you know, like you said, creating brands and creating products and maybe one day having them be sold in CVS. Exactly. So I completely agree. And I think that although we've seen so much progress and so much work, the fact that there's still so much more work to do mm-hmm. is the only thing I think keeps people like me and you motivated to keep doing what we're doing. Exactly. And what I want to add to that is I see a lot of dark tones right now, but we still cha- we still have a challenge with undertones. That part. And that's <laughs> what I want to talk about in our master class yeah. today. Um, because, you know, just because a tone is like deep brown, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that it actually matches us or anyone exactly um and i work um a lot with different brands you know on the product development side Mm -hmm. so i know a lot about undertones so i can't wait for us to get into that part too it's gonna be something to look forward to (laughs) it's really amazing to be able to work with a brand like cvs and put something like this together because i when when i first started watching master classes and seeing master classes when i moved out here in la felt like i was missing a lot of different tips and tricks from certain creators or certain people that they would have to come and do the master class. They never looked like me. They weren't even remotely close to like looking like me. Mm-hmm. And it really, fe- I really felt like every single time I was walking away with half the information, I felt like I wasn't getting everything that I was supposed to be getting from it. So the fact that I'm able to be here as CBS and beauty inclusivity consultant and put together a series like this, where I get to bring you and you get to show us everything that you've learned throughout your entire career and just show us how to, it's really, it's really important to me. And it means a lot to me because I never had this growing up. Mm. And if I would have, and I would have seen people doing the things that we're doing right now, I think it would have really changed the trajectory of like certain things that I felt within myself when I was younger. Mm. You know, like seeing myself as beautiful, seeing myself as like this strong person that yes. belongs to that belongs in the beauty industry. 
that is a part of the beauty industry and that is beautiful you know i would love to hear what you think the industry needs going forward see i want to see more entrepreneurship mm -hmm. i think that we know ourselves better than anyone absolutely so um black ownership is really important to me i agree um and I want little girls that are shopping in the aisles like we did when we were 13 to be they able to themselves. see their um, shades mm -hmm. and to be able to see themselves in, you know, campaigns. Mm -hmm. That just makes you feel confident, you know, and why, why not? We're beautiful as mm -hmm. well. And we should have always been in those spaces. But Absolutely. I want that to continue to um, progress. I agree with you on more black owned brands and in in, in black owned businesses in general, mm -hmm. um, especially black owned beauty brands, because like you said um, earlier, no one's going to speak to our beauty better than us. No yeah. one's going to understand our undertones, our discoloration. If we want to show off our discoloration, how do we like accentuate it without like, yeah. you know, how do we, if we want, if we don't want to cover it up, how do we accentuate it and make it part of our face, make it part of our beauty instead yeah. of like constantly just covering it up. No one's going to be able to speak to our beauty better than us, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As we're sitting here talking today, mm -hmm. I've had to represent so many models that would come to me outside of fashion shows, mm -hmm. photo shoots, and I would do their makeup off-site mm -hmm. and send them to the jobs. Oh my God. And white off makeup site? artists would get the credit for those jobs. Off-site. Yes. Wow. So this journey has been so long for me. You know, I've always kind of been in makeup. Mm -hmm. I've done makeup for my cousins mm -hmm. or for my mom when I was growing up, and they always said that I was really good at it. But I had the dream of being a visual artist. Mm -hmm. I have a master's in fine arts. Mm -hmm. I wanted to paint. I didn't think that I would get into makeup artistry at all. And then I moved to New York from yeah. Connecticut. And that's when everything just hit me. I was like, okay, what, what is it that I'm really going to do yeah. here? So for me, I just wanted to make sure that I brought a little bit of my culture. I brought a little mm -hmm. bit of my art background into everything that I do right now. Yeah. And it has blossomed into who I am today. Because just yeah. being able to represent for us means the world to me. Absolutely. Yes. We so love to see it. I love, we Thank love to so see much. it. Absolutely. That's it. That's yeah. it. Here we are. Here we are. Here's where we're going to have the most fun. I'm super excited. So, so tell fun. me. What are we doing? So we're going to focus we on complexion. Mm -hmm. I really want the skin to look exactly how it looks right now, which I mean, I'm, I technically don't think that you need anything, Yeah. but the people are here to see the makeup look. They're here for the glam, okay? They're here, They're for, here the for the glam. The, dew, the glow, all of it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do my signature dewy brown girl look. Yes. Ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. So the first step for me is always brows and I like to do this before I even apply any skin prep at all. Have you ever done brows before, after foundation or has it always been just like brows? If I'm doing like a sheer like kind of fluffy soft brow yeah. then I will wait to do it at the end but mm -hmm. for this I really want the brows to be defined okay. and I think it's best to fill them in before we um we start application or a complexion application. I see. Yeah. I used to do brows before foundation. Okay. And then I switched to brows after foundation for okay. complexion, especially for the forehead. Mm -hmm. I find it hard to like do foundation around there. So I'm going to see how you're going to do it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I also feel that the brows kind of slide around sometimes. So it's kind of good to do it before any skin prep. I see. Yeah. Then I like to brush as I'm filling it in. As you're filling it mm -hmm. in. Okay just to brush out excess um, product. I actually don't brush at all because I feel like most brow products don't go deep enough for my skin tone. Mm -hmm. And so I just go in and then sometimes I do have the boxy brow, so maybe that's why. Does the brushing help with like the boxy brow? It does, okay. it definitely does. I see. So what you wanna do or what I do is okay. right here near your nose bridge, yeah. I don't apply too much product. I put a lot of um, detailing on the end. Uh -huh. Right here where your arch is, mm -hmm. I like to bring it up just a little bit higher. I'm just making it just a tiny bit thicker mm -hmm. and then I'm leaving it thinner here at the base. Oh, I see. We're at the start of the brow. Interesting. Just something that I'm just learning to do right now, just based off of how your face is shaped. I just think that this shape looks really pretty. I love that you, even though you've been doing this for so long, you still try new things. Right. All, all the that. time. Yeah. And is the bottom of the arch, is that what you're bringing up higher or the top of it? The top. Oh. Mm-hmm. Right, so I'm gonna have you turn towards me. 
feel the same. So what's the hardest thing that you've learned in regards to doing makeup? Was it brows? Was it complexion? Ooh. Was it eyeshadow? I think for me it was complexion. I think it was because complexion because of the lack of products mm -hmm. really like it, it wasn't till recently like this year that i finally found like bronzers a cream bronzer specifically that works for my skin tone so yeah. i think complexion was like the trickiest part i was like I'm, to me i like to think i'm queen of finessing when it comes to <laughs> complexion products right same. like i'll use an eyeshadow mm -hmm. i'll use a lipstick yeah <laughs> it's crazy Just constantly improvising yeah you know, um, which isn't what we should have to do. Exactly. But, you know, we've been there. What about you? What's like, what was your, like, what's your least favorite step for you? Oh, um, you know what's really weird yeah. is lashes are just not my favorite. You don't like lashes? No. Do you not like them because like they're too like the, the lash like trend was like very much so big. You know what I feel? Lashes. I feel like sometimes lashes actually take away from the eyeshadow look that I do instead of accentuating it. Yeah. Some people feel like their lashes, the, their um, eyeshadow look is not complete until right. they have lashes It's on. true. It's, it's true. Interesting. Yeah. So for me, I love like more natural um, lashes mm -hmm. and I also find that a lot of lashes are uncomfortable to some people yeah um, the band sometimes is too thick mm -hmm. and sometimes it's kind of pokey yeah so um, you know the lashes that I do like I really like for them to have a thin band mm -hmm. I like a thin band and I also really like a very thin lash too like I don't like it overly fluffy I have small eyes so they eat my eyes up like yeah if they're too big and then we're just gonna move right into foundation oh really mm -hmm. so do you like to clean up the brows afterwards i do and um just a fun fact i know a lot of people like to do the concealer trick mm -hmm. i chose two shades yeah. right i chose the l'oreal true match in c10 and c12 mm -hmm. so in the center of your face i'm going to do c10 mm -hmm. and then the perimeter of your face i'm going to do c12 interesting and right now underneath your brows mm -hmm. to do our highlighting i'm doing c10 okay yep so you're gonna turn towards me. I've heard of like mixing foundations, mm -hmm. but this is gonna be the first, I mean, I've tried to mix foundations before too, but this is gonna be the first time doing different shades in different parts of my face. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So tell me your technique. Do you normally go all uh, over with one shade? Yes. Okay. I normally go all over with one shade and then concealer to like highlight the center and then contour and all that stuff. Got it. Mm -hmm. So for me, even, um, there are certain parts of the face that I may leave bare. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's like if I don't need any coverage there, I'll just allow my skin prep to shine through. Mm. And that's how I keep the doing this. Oh, I see. So it's like different, you know, tricks that you can do. That's great. I feel like that also probably adds to like the naturalness of it mm -hmm. all. So I'm going in with C12 in the center of your forehead as well, just to kind of highlight this area. Okay. So for your chest area, it's like a little bit lighter and mm -hmm. I'm just bringing that to the center of your face just to connect that yeah. and then leaving the perimeter darker. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's normally what I like to do is, well, normally I go like with my face because obviously my face is a couple shades darker than my chest. Right. And then I bring in the tones of my chest with the concealer, but I think I like this idea of like doing two different shades on just different parts of the body. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I don't know, because your um, complexion is so beautiful and I don't want to erase it at yeah. all. I'm trying to keep both. I'm trying to just, you know, have a good combination of both of them, gotcha. both shades. Gotcha. I love this brow pencil. NYX, NYX. and it's black. It's in the shape black. Mm hmm. What should we see? We'll <laughs> see you later. We will see you later. All right, I think the brows are on. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of eyeshadow to the foundation. Mm hmm. Oh. Nope, to the eye. Oh, to the eye. Yeah. <laughs> like, to the foundation. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. It's like, that's new. Right. But I've heard of people adding powder to um, foundation to like make it more matte. Mm hmm. I don't think I would ever do that. <laughs> Just a no. I know. What is the most favorite look you've ever done? Like, what's your like top three? 
Oh, so I know this, I don't know if this is gonna sound silly or not, but I try very hard to not get attached to any looks. Oh, really? Yeah, because that keeps me fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't wanna get too comfortable. I wanna continue to grow and learn, and, you know, do, you know, new techniques. Mm -hmm. So I really try hard not to get attached to a look. So once I do it, I'm like, okay, what's next? I see. Yeah, but for me, it's just all about complexion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love, um, you know, like once I finish a look and then I photograph it and mm -hmm. I'm just like, wow, we did it. You do the photos yourself? I do, and I also have a team. Interesting. Yeah, I have a photographer that comes so on love board. Love talented is amazing. Queen. Yeah, but I try to do try to do it all sometimes but you know it's great to have a great team yeah absolutely all right so i added a little bit of shadow okay just to see where i'm going i'm kind of feeling like some jewel tones or maybe like a really beautiful gold interesting on your eye i just want something to make them pop okay so pretty so this is milani skin skin quench I'm going to apply this on the high points of the face. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I don't know if for some reason I thought it was like going to go all over. Yeah. And I'm going to put but it But it makes everywhere. sense with the high points of the face. Mm -hmm. Especially the parts where I really want them to kind of gleam naturally. How important is skin prep to I feel like it your is. signature look? I feel like skin prep is so important. It's like the foundation for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it just lays um, the groundwork for you, for all of the products that are to follow. I see. Yeah, so it's really important to make sure that you take the time to prep the skin. I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a makeup artist. They're like, you're not gonna, even when I come prep, they're like, I'm gonna still prep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, it's foundation, time. It's foundation time. I'm just gonna place the product on with my fingers. So this is C10, and I'm using it in the center of your face. Now, how important is warming up foundation with your fingers? Now, I think it's very important. Yeah. I have completely changed the texture of a foundation with my fingers. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because I used to dot my foundation on with my fingers, mm -hmm. and then I stopped, and now I'm just like, because I get fingerprints all over my house. Right. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's terrible. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped, and I was like, okay. But now that you're like actually, you know, applying it, not mm -hmm. only that, almost blending it in yeah. with your fingers, I really want to know. Yeah. I it love feels it. really nice. Though. I know, right? <laughs> like a little face massage. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you another trick. So underneath the eyes, mm -hmm. I never take foundation or concealer all the way to the lash line. Okay. I like to leave that area, even if it's discoloration, mm -hmm. I like to leave it exposed. Okay. Because I think that it looks beautiful and really natural. Interesting. What's really interesting is that I actually like discoloration around the eyes. I think it's really you pretty. Do. I do. Interesting. Yeah. So I kind of use it. Isn't it like a new like um, trend that's going on right now where people are actually like making their eyes look I like guess, tired. I guess I was on trend probably 10 you, years ago because, <laughs> because I've always loved that, yeah. you know? Interesting. I get it though, because it's kind of like almost like a natural eyeshadow ish. Right. This is, this, you know, this and is it C12. Adds to, this is C12 around the perimeter. C12 is like perfection it is on my face. It is perfection. It's not going on. But I've never actually used a product like this. I mean, the fact that sometimes um, it's so hard to find contour products in the drugstore. Right. So the idea of actually using um, a foundation like this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we would still love to see the contour products actually be in the stores. Yeah, exactly. So now we're going in blending. You can turn slightly away from me. So, yeah. So okay. when it comes to this coloration, wow. I'm like, it's so I'm like so excited. Seeing you excited makes me excited. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to um, discoloration, do you like to color correct? 
I do, but I don't like to use as much color correction as I've seen a mm. lot of people use. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I like to keep it very sheer. Okay. So my technique is all about um, adding very um, sheer layer, layers of each product. Mm -hmm because I feel like little small steps, it gets you to a greater end goal. I see. Mm -hmm. And do you, um, so do you prefer like a BB cream or a CC cream or something like that, opposed to like a thicker foundation? So I do love a medium to full medium coverage okay. foundation. And then you just sheer it out on your mm -hmm. I do. I can sheer it out with skin prep, but I do love medium to sheer. Those are my favorite. I mean, I'm sorry, medium to full medium. coverage, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I have to ask because I will be dragged in the streets if I don't. <laughs> when you um, matched these two shades, how were you able to figure out the undertone? So, Especially since this is our first time working together. Absolutely. So in the center of your, um, well, what people do not know is mm -hmm. that I was able to see your complexion off camera. Mm -hmm. um, so in the center of your chest, again, like we mentioned, it's a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. But what I see in that tone is, um, it's kind of golden. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that I left the center of your face this tone. Gotcha. But when I look at the, kind of like the perimeter of your body, yeah. You see the outer mm -hmm. zone, this is like the outer zone, this is deeper. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that I'm matching it. So it's really interesting because it's just like, you're keeping the lighter tone in the center in mm -hmm. your chest, you know, yeah. this tone is in the center as well. Yeah. And then you're keeping the perimeter darker. So for me, I love to look at the overall body. Gotcha. So not it's just, not just the that face. one spot. Yeah, and match your body, mm -hmm. not just your face. Okay. I yeah. agree because I just don't like wearing foundation or makeup in general on my body. Mm -hmm. like my clothes don't agree with it. My life right. doesn't agree with it. But it's very interesting that you say I'm golden because I normally used to think I'm very more red. Mm -hmm. and, um, but you I definitely have do seen... have some red undertones yeah. for sure. But I feel like the red is more um, the is more towards the darker tones. Gotcha. Yeah, the lighter tones are a little bit more golden in my opinion. Interesting. So after I blend everything out, I look um, at the overall face, or I'm looking all over your face just to see if I need more coverage anywhere. And normally whenever I'm dealing with darker complexions, there is a lot of hyperpigmentation around the mouth area. This is like a zone mm -hmm. that hyperpigmentation really targets. Mm -hmm. So I will go in and add more coverage here. Let me see. Mm-hmm. I know some people, when they think about hyperpigmentation, they just try and cancel it all out. And add more coverage everywhere and mm -hmm. then get the cake face sometimes. Well, you know something else? I have a lot of people talking to me about oily skin mm -hmm. and the more product that you put on, the more, you know, it's going to break down into oil. So that's another reason why I try to keep everything Interesting. sheer. Mm -hmm. I did not know that even with like powders, because like, you know, I don't necessarily have oily skin, but I know people that do, they like to make sure the powder is like powdered. Exactly. So, so I'm telling you, one day just test it out. Just, you know, add just a sheer coverage, mm -hmm. a sheer amount of products everywhere mm -hmm. and just see how your oil um, level is throughout the day. Okay. That's like a way that I like to, you know, keep everybody pretty dewy and mad at the same time. Interesting. One thing, one question that I get all the time is, can everybody be a dewy brown girl? Can everybody be a dewy brown girl? <laughs> and the, the answer is yes, Okay. but I feel that if you are oily, you want to target just certain areas to leave dewy. I see. Just like for instance, if you're oily around your T-zone, you just want to apply your dewy products at the high points of your face. I see. Right? And then mattify like the center. Okay. Some people can be dewy all over. Yeah. Oh, right? I see. What Some you people mean. just can't. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you have a lot of texture, sometimes dewy products kind of accentuate that the a little texture. bit. Mm -hmm. okay. So for anyone that has texture, I like to add more powders. So it's just like, you know, it's for everybody, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I basically do everyone's makeup based on, you know, their skin type. Yeah. That makes sense. I can see like the dewy, everyone can be a dewy brown girl, but the oily skin, you just be careful. Right. Not to go Exactly. Overboard. 
good. I'm so, not good at nose contour, so I never hardly ever do it. So I really want to make sure people see how you're doing. So it's interesting. I I am your girl for for nose contour, but not really because I don't. I'm not really a fan of contouring contour the nose. Colors, yeah. So I like to leave it kind of soft. Okay. I just use your foundation. I use the C12. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to add a little bit of depth. Nice. Down the sides of the nose. And I'm just blending the foundation that I already applied. Mm -hmm. and I feel like nose contour can go left so fast. It's Either true. you get the night, the, the landing strip right <laughs> in the center of your nose, or you yeah. got the muddy sides of the nose. Exactly. It's just like, it's too much work. Okay, the brows are it's already so taking me 50 work. minutes. Right. <laughs> so now it's time for concealer. I mean, and I'm using the CoverGirl Clean Fresh. So again, I'm applying the concealer, but I'm leaving the um, a little bit of space between this area and the lash line. Okay. That's my natural smoky vibe that we're going for underneath the eye. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your goal for like concealer? Some people like to go to use it as like to shape the face. Mm -hmm. So like the triangle thing is like a really interesting thing that, I mean, everyone does the triangle. Mm -hmm. And then some people like to use just to highlight and um, brighten the under eyes. So what do you normally like to go, like when you think about concealer, what do you do? So I like to, I like to use concealer um, for its exact meaning. I mm -hmm. like to conceal. Mm -hmm. So underneath the eye, I use it to brighten. Mm -hmm. Um, and to lift this under eye area. And if I have parts of the face that needs to, you know, more coverage, mm -hmm. um, I will go in and add concealer. Okay. Yeah, but for the under eye, I really love to brighten this area slightly. Okay. And for me, I like to go two shades lighter, and that's the most I will go. No more. No more. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit to the forehead, but not much. Okay. Also bringing it into the center of the chin. And this is just to bring in this lighter area mm -hmm. in the center of your chest to bring it to the center of the face. Okay. It's all about balance for me. Oh, so you're just using a flat edge. Yes, Interesting. Flat. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves the pointed edge. Mm -hmm. Why the flat edge? Because I just feel like my application just looks super smooth underneath your eye with, with this flat edge. edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is the Elf sponge. This is, and I love it. I really do. Elf has like, everyone sleeps on um, Elf sponges. Elf has the best sponges, like especially they're the, so nice. I like the beige one. I like the black one, mm -hmm. and I've just recently started using these pink ones too, and they're all so good. I really love these pink ones. Turn for from the court. Wait, this sponge isn't wet. So this one, it is a little bit damp, oh, but like we made sure that we little. very, very, very little. Why is that? Well, you know Because most what? people like to do like the very damp sponge. Oh my God, I've had sponges that were way, way too wet. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're too wet, mm -hmm. um, they'll pick, pick up, up some of the makeup. Oh, I see. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you have a happy medium. I see. So for the concealer, you do use like a very lightly damp. Lightly sponge. damp. But for the foundation, you saw that I had yeah, quite wet. a bit of water yeah. in that one. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's good too. I'm definitely going to try that. Alright, cool. So now that we have your foundation blended, I like to go in with a clean brush mm -hmm. and just buff out any harsh lines just to make sure everything is smooth. Okay. I normally do this with a sponge. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I feel like it gets a little muddy. Yeah. So I think the, <laughs> the clean brush idea yeah. kind of sounds mm -hmm. logical. Use like a fluffy brush, mm -hmm. nothing too dense like because a you, brush. like a powder brush mm -hmm. or a blush brush mm -hmm. would be great. Okay. I'm just going in. Gorgeous. All right, so now we're gonna add blush. And for deeper skin, I love to use corals and hot pinks. Hot pinks, mm -hmm. interesting. I just feel like those shades look so beautiful on us. I like hot pink. Um, I mean, I like pinks, but I normally, ha I haven't used a hot pink. Really? Yeah. 
but I love a good coral. I love me a good orange blush. Mm -hmm, me too. Orange just looks so great on us. Okay, so are we ready for our blush moment? Okay, so we're gonna use CoverGirl True Blend in So Flushed. And look at this gorgeous that shade. That color is stunning. stunning. This is a new to me blush though, so I'm excited to see what this is gonna look like. Yes, so blush placement. Right? Okay. So for you, I would really like to apply the blush on the apples of your cheek. Okay. And sweep upward. Okay. I'm just going in right here on the apples in mm -hmm. circular motions and then brushing upward. Mm -hmm. And I know you just told me that you like to apply blush on wet foundation. Wet foundation. And this is powder. So do mm -hmm. you find that sometimes it streaks or is there like a method to the madness? You know what? I think that if you apply sheer, um, just a sheer amount, mm -hmm. it just blends seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love mineralized blushes for this. That seems to blend really beautifully. Okay. Turn towards me. And I think, like other like specific parts of like routines, it just depends. Placement just depends on your face shape. Yes, okay. absolutely. So. For you, I love, I love how this blush looks on the apples of your cheek. Okay. I just feel like it just warms up this area and it just looks really gorgeous. So I am a person that literally applies blush everywhere. Okay. I use blush as a color correcting um, product. Interesting. I do. How does that work? So for shades that are lighter than this and kind of peachy, uh -huh. sometimes I feel that under the eye, especially when you set that area with like a setting powder that's like too yellow, this or a blush that is a little bit lighter than this but peachy it actually tones that down oh, and it looks really really beautiful okay. yeah so i'm just going in just warming up the face in different areas i know it's this blush trend going on everyone is applying blush everywhere Every, I, oh like the big strobed out blush mm -hmm. effects okay i see but i promise you i've been doing this for a very long time. She's and like, I've been looks, on this. Okay. <laughs> and it just looks gorgeous. All right, cool. So our blush is on. So now we're gonna set your under eye. And before we set that area, I like to just make sure that, you know, everything is blended. I think this is the one step that I get super lazy on on my routine. Mm -hmm. I very, always forget to go back in and re-blend the under eyes. Oh, Especially yeah. Especially with like creases, I should always remember, but I don't. So what's your favorite product at the moment? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> I you can put it in a category. Okay. I have been loving um, skin tints. Mm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it gives me an excuse to go light because normally I'm just so used to going heavy with foundations. Mm -hmm. So skin tints give me an, give me an excuse to go. Oh, I'm already wearing a light foundation. Right. I don't have to do too much. Right. What about you? You know, you already know the answer to this, Nima. Yeah. It's all about complexion I for know. me. So foundation, foundation. But I am loving. Um, the contour shades okay. that are out coming the new out. Ones that mm -hmm. are coming out. Okay. Yeah. And also, I already told you this, my favorite mascara, right? No. Was the L'Oreal Voluminous. L'Oreal Volumin Voluminous. Voluminous. Yes. Carbon Black. Carbon Black is like the go to. It is the go to. It's the goat. It's the go. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I like the telescopic because, it like, I feel like it helps with my baby lashes. But oh, okay. And why the wedge? So the wedge helps me get right, right underneath and right in these little nooks, mm. right by the nose, mm -hmm. right here. It's so great, even when it's like, you know, oh, right near the lip area. They may sell these at CVS too. Mm. It's nothing like a wig sponge. Okay. So for your eye, I am gonna bring in some color. Okay. And I'm gonna apply it with my fingers. And also the warmth from your fingers okay. can help with fallout. 
it can help kind of like hold the pigment together. Yep. And this is Maybelline um, the City Mini Palette. And it's 550 Cocoa City. Okay. <laughs> and what shape? Oh, it's that copper. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Okay, cool. All right, so close for me. So for your lid, I like to bring the eyeshadow up a little bit higher, closer to your um, crease area. Gotcha. I also do have like a hood, a, like a mini hood, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And based off of how your eye shape is, I love to add like a shimmer in the inner corner. Eyeshadow is pigmented. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some liner. Look up for me. So you asked me what my least favorite part is, and I think I said something different. This is actually <laughs> it, because I don't like for, you know, my clients yeah. or muses to feel uncomfortable. I hate inner wire. Hate it, but it's so pretty. Cool. You wanna know a trick when you're tearing up? So you sniff through your nose really quick like this. And it- Oh, quick. Quick. <laughs> and, it, and it closes your tear ducts. Yeah, just in case you're watering, yeah. Ooh, this liner is gorgeous. So pretty. This is the Maybelline Master Precise Skinny Liner. Gel pencil, actually. Wow, it's stunning. So now we're gonna add liner to the top. And this is the Revlon Color Stay. Skinny as well, another skinny one. Look how thin this is. Mm-hmm, close one. So for wing liner, I like to start in the center of the eye and bring it outward. Maybe this is kind of the bottom part of it first. Mm. But sometimes I feel like I think it either I take it out too far or the angle isn't the same. Right. It does. <laughs> so does taking it from the center out to the, on the top line, does that help? I feel like it really offers me a great baseline and it just helps me out. I always start in the center and sometimes I'll add a tiny, like thin, thin line in the inner mm -hmm. part of the eye, which I'm doing right now. But I will tell you this brush is making this application so easy. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. And now it's time for my favorite mascara. I'm adding a little mascara before lashes. Mm -hmm. I think mascara is like my least favorite. Really? Because like, my lashes are so small. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, why am I going to dive with mascara on when <laughs> no one's going to be able to see them? It's so funny. And now this is your favorite mascara in general, not just oh in my the gosh. store. Yes, this is the mascara that I use all the time. It's just so good, and it's really, really dark. Mm -hmm. um, and it also doesn't bleed okay. or transfer into the, you know, the complexion or the skin um, products at all. So that's that's what I love the most. Beautiful. What are you talking about? You have the cutest lashes. They're, They're so, so pretty. Little. They're like little wannabe spiders in my face. <laughs> They're really pretty. So we could stop here, but we're gonna we're gonna bring the drama. Okay. It's brown eyeshadow all day for me. Yes. Okay. 
gorgeous. This is me, I call it dusting off the contour. So I like to go on top of the contour mm -hmm. and just brush it so that there are no harsh lines. Okay. No lines straight? No, no straight. What color is this? This is on the grid. On the grid. On the grid. Make this thing up. And this thing you're going in is going to be the fluffy brush. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the fluffy brush to get things in. Yeah, I feel like that really blends harsh lines. Mm -hmm. So the dewy look really comes from just like the perimeter not really being overly set with powder. Exactly. Okay. So I, I only reason I thought is like extra dew, like <laughs> extra glow. Well, you know, for so, for some people it is. For some, mm -hmm. you know, for some um, of my muses, I like to leave the cheek area dewy. Mm. But for you, I don't know. I just I really love like just this top area a little bit dewy. Okay. But it's all about even if it's not shiny. Mm -hmm. It's still glow. Or dewy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just all about like the inner glow and just having everything super blended yes. on the face. All right. I think we're all set. Really? Mm -hmm. We're finally done using all CVS Beauty. Yes. You look absolutely gorgeous. I am obsessed with the tie. Yes. The slit, everything. So for this look, I wanted to keep the skin very clean and just even. Um, I didn't overly highlight underneath the eye. I just would love your even, beautiful skin tone. And then I also wanted to add a pop on the eye. And I just think that we pulled it off. Yes, absolutely. Right? Looks really good. <laughs> so beautiful. I love it.